Good evening. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Mayor and City Council of the City of College Park. I'm Mayor Bianca Motley Broom. We have a full quorum present with Council Members McKenzie, Karn, Arnold, and Gay. And so at 7.30 p.m. I will call the meeting to order at this time, subject to my continuing objections to the omnibus motion passed by this Council on Jan January 2nd and Ordinance 2024-01. So we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chaplain Walker is coming for our invocation. Good evening. Good evening. Council people, the right term? Yes. Council folks. Just council, council folks. People, council I like council folks. <laughs> anything. Anything. You'll respond to it. <laughs> well, it's good to be here. And good to be with everybody here. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our Lord, as we gather here, for this mayor and council meeting, along with others who are present to be to know, to be heard, and to be valued individually as citizens of College Park and their desires for a vibrant and accepting community, one that is fair to all and want his life, liberty, and justice for all. We give our thanks, O oh God, to you for your divine values, for all humanity, all peoples everywhere, seeking more order and compassion over the rise of chaos. Quicken the minds, O oh Lord, of our mayor and our council persons so that they see and understand the issues that concern us. Touch their hearts to be mindful, to put the good of the city over any personal or professional concerns. We pray, O oh God, in light of the last few council meetings, there's a sense of a lack of transparency and a feeling that we are not particularly cared for. We want more dialogue. We want to be told what's going on, to know rather than to not know. Be near us in our hurts and our concerns. Prod our minds that a spiritual life goes hand in hand with the Pledge of Allegiance to our nation. May we strive, O oh God, for both. We give thanks now, O oh Lord, for our mayor and our city council persons and all of those who assist them in their duties. We hope, O oh God, that we can leave this meeting with the feeling and the understanding that we are cared for and our care for others is wanted, and that we all are duly represented. In the name of faith, hope, and love, so be it. Amen. 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 Additions, deletions, amendments, or changes to the agenda? Dr. Adedirin? Um, Three guys. First one, uh, consecration to renew property zoning motion from August 7, 2023. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Consecration to renew a property zoning motion from August 7, 2023. 
The second one is conservation to asset economic grant. And the last one is uh, IGA for 14 counties to conduct election services for the most referendum. And this will cost the city money. I also have an one, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Council Member McKenzie, give, give me one moment here. Let me, the consideration to renew a property zoning? Yeah, from August 7, 2020. Specifically, what is it? Huh? What is it? It's a, um, uh, it's to renew, uh, a, a motion to renew Um, a rezoning um, motion from August 7, 2023. What was the motion? Um, the motion is to um, change from a business park to a light industrial. To a light industrial. What's the address? I make a motion that we accept the addition to the agenda as stated by the city manager. Uh, council member, I'm trying to get sp uh, specificity on this, not only for the governing body, but also the public. Because if we're, if we're renewing yeah. a property zoning motion, so if you could just uh, list out the address. Excuse me, excuse me, mayor, mayor, excuse me, there's a motion. Sir, I'll, I was, I'll I was, second it. If, I, I, I think we'll understand whatever this is if once we get into the um, the meeting. I think that that's what the purpose of discussion would be. Yes. All right. So there's a motion. There's a second. Any discussion? I've got some. What is the address? Motion to carry, ma'am. I have a call for the vote. What is the address? Zero welcome all rule. Zero welcome all rule. Word. Welcome all. Word. Do we need, did we vote? No. And number two, Dr. Adedirin? Is to, number two is uh, to accept economic grant. Can you be more specific than accept an economic grant? It's a uh, consideration of an action to accept 106, 1 million 600,000 economic development grant from Southwest Atlanta uh, battery storage, and that will be allocated to all the uh, four wards. It will be shared equal. A $1.6 million grant? Yes. I make a motion that we accept the addition as stated by the. I'm sorry, we're still in, we're in discussion. You've already made a motion, and there's a second. But this it, is the second um, item. You said, you said all the changes. I'm sorry? But you we, didn't we, call we, the vote on the first item. There's a motion. You have to call the vote, man. You're right. We're in discussion. I'm trying to understand item number two. Accept a $1.6 million. Grant. Economy Development Grant. From whom? Southwest Atlanta Battery Storage. Southwest Atlanta Battery Storage. Yes. And number three is the IGA for Fulton County for the most referendum. Yes, most, yes, ma'am. Intergovernment agreement. Dr. Adderian, you have those typed out, right? Yes, ma'am. Can I have that, please? from the city clerk, she sent that. Any further discussion? 
Now I have some other items to add, so I don't know if we're actually getting ready to vote for all the items that we're adding, or is that what we're doing? Well, the motion was okay. made for, for these three, so we can we can we can add more, but these these three. Okay. I do have another one to add. Okay, but not the motion was for these three, so we can do more. Okay, that's but, fine. Um, all in favor to add these, and we'll put them at the top. Uh, we'll put them at. Eight A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes unanimously. Councilmember McKenzie. Okay. I would like to make, uh, I guess, consideration to install sidewalks from the Oxford Walk subdivision on Fairway to Washington Road. Uh, this actually would cost less than 10000 but I wanted to put it to a vote. So that would be an, ex an additional agenda item. S to install sidewalks from the Oxford Walk subdivision on Fairway to Washington Road. There's a Councilmember McKenzie. Is that a motion? No. Well, that's what I want to add to the agenda. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, so that just you're making that motion. Oh yeah. I guess I can make the motion as well. Yes. Okay. Certainly. All right. Is there I a second? If we had anything else second. that needs to be added. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Carden. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, we'll add that as 8D. Aye. 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 All right. That is unanimous. Any other additional changes? Amendments. I have a, I've got a change. Uh, items eight. Uh, I'd like those on the consent agenda. However, we'll start city clerk um, in regards to uh, agenda item eight. I'd like what is now I guess eight e from eight e to eight k, with the exception of pulling out item uh, which was 8E originally, which is consideration from the fire department. Do you see 8E? So I'm pulling that out of the consent agenda. So we'll start at what was 8A, which is now 8D, down to 8K, which is now 8K. Council which, member. Which was uh, G. Is that, do you, do you follow that? Council member, for clarity, can you identify which particular items that you would like as a consent agenda. City Clerk, do you follow uh, the ones that are on the consent agenda? So all of those original ones with the exception of, of what was E. Council Member Karn, can and you just identify? I, I'm identifying this with the City Clerk right now. I, if, if you I'm, I'm asking finish. you to actually just read well, them out. Read, she, read ide identify individual ones that you, that you want because you're pulling out one that's already in that list. So if you would, that, just for everyone, for everyone's sake, that's, just. Right. That's exactly what the city clerk is going to do for us here in a minute once she gets together. So you, you understand basically the, the items that we're talking about? Would you like me to read them? Okay, yes. Well, originally, originally it would be items 8A, B, C, D, F, and G. That's it. Okay. A, B, C, right. D, which ones? City Sir, clerk, can you just respond you, to me? I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a direct question. Well, what, I, I, which I'm ones? Giving a, B, this C, D. To the city clerk, so she can make sure. Do you, city clerk, do you have the ones we're, we're putting on the consent agenda? As one item. Consent agenda items are A, B, C, D, F, and G. Remove item eight E to be discussed separately. That's correct. Okay. All right. That will require a motion. Yes, ma'am. I'll make that motion. All right, so the motion is to have the former items, 8A, which would be consideration and action of a request to amend the date of the mayor and city council meeting from May 20th to May 22nd. Item 8B, consideration of an action on a request to purchase 10 open gate magnetometers for venue security purposes at the Gateway Center Arena. Item 8C, consideration of an action to accept Fulton County Community Development Block Grant Award Park improvements in the amount of $214,125 for Phillips Park Basketball Court in Ward 4. 
Item 8D, consideration of an action on request for approval to purchase one set of the Jaws of Life extrication tools for the fire department. Uh, item 8, former 8F, consideration of an action on a request to approve replacement purchases of units 289 and 290 for two Chevy Silverado 1500 vehicles for stormwater uh, from Hardy Automotive Fleet Group under a state contract. And former 8G, consideration of an action on a request to purchase a replacement vehicle for water and sewer from Griffin Chevrolet. All right. Is there a second on that? No, not yet. All right. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilmember Arnold. Any discussion? I want to just say that all of these items that I see are budgeted items just for the information of the persons that are here. So uh, they are all budgeted items that are on the consent agenda. Dr. Adedirin, why are we moving the date of the council meeting? Why, what? <clears throat> why are we moving the date of the council meeting? Is point of order, point of order, is there, we are we're not even up to voting uh, at this time, so I don't know if that is a question that should be, we're not even having discussion on that item. So just, yeah. Not that the answer couldn't be given, but I'm just saying that seems a bit out of order. Thank you, Council Member McKenzie. Dr. Adderdeeran, why are we moving the meeting? You told me about um, the B, right? 8A. No, sir, it's the council meeting date. It's not Mercedes either. Um, the, the, the A, 8A. Oh, you mean, um, excuse me, motion and to move it from the 20th to, to the 22nd? Yes, sir. Um, the, the um, reason being that then there's some um, conference is going on and we will have a forum. What it, what's going on? Well, I can tell you, I, I, for one, I was going to be out of town on that day, uh, so I wouldn't be able to make it, and I ask if, uh, if it wasn't too inconvenient to move it to Wednesday. Is anyone else going to be out of town? I think Council Member Gay. Council Member Gay, um, both Council Member Cohen and Gay are going on the conference, and you will have a forum on that day, and okay. that's why it didn't move to the Wednesday the 23rd. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote to uh, make this a consent agenda. These items are consent agenda. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Okay. All right. That is unanimous. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Thank you, Councilmember McKenzie. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilmember Arnold. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That is unanimous. Thank you. Ward 3 Planning Commission. Councilmember Arnold? Do you have an appointee um, for Ward 3 Planning Commission? No. And where is this? This is item 4A. No, we need to remove that. I didn't add that. Oh, okay. All right. That was there. Supposed to have been taken out. Yeah, I, I was going to say yeah, that, that was, was, supposed supposed to was not supposed to be on the agenda. Okay. All right. We'll move past it. City manager, I, I guess, city clerk, yes, I guess sir. you still sound in the agenda, right? If that's the will, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Okay, the next item is the presentation of minutes of the city council. The first item is regular session minutes dated January 16, 2024. Is there a motion? I, I'd like to make a motion to approve with discussion, of course. Thank you, Councilmember McKenzie. Is there a second? second. Thank you, Councilmember Carr. Go right ahead, Councilmember McKenzie. Okay, line 832 in this, uh, the January 16th uh, session, regular session. I want that correction to what I said. I said I would like to know exactly what we are going to be discussing on this. I think it just, it doesn't say that. And I think that's important. So it says I would like to know exactly what we are going to be discussing on this. 
Then for item line number 931, all of my comments are missing from, the, from this. I will read what the comments are that I actually said. And it's a quite lengthy. I know that this is a project that we have been working on for quite some time. We're talking about the Flint River. I know that this is a project that we have been working on for quite some time in the city. However, I'm ambivalent at this moment and I'm trying to make a determination. I hear from my colleagues the concerns that they have had and there is an unfair balance in our city in terms of recreation facilities, in terms of what I should say parks. So I'm still, I'm still making a consideration and that's all I have to say at this point. So all of that was omitted from the minutes. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. And this is with the adjustment, correct? With the adjustment, with the corrections. Councilmember Carn, do you still hold your second on that? With yes. the second. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Aye. All right. That is unanimous. The next item is workshop session minutes dated January 16, 2024. Is there a motion? Motion. Thank you, Councilmember Carn. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilmember McKenzie. Any discussion? Yes. Councilmember Arnold? Um, page, uh, package page uh, 57, line 706. Those are not my comments. Those belong to Councilwoman McKenzie. Page 60, line 805. I don't, I, I'm not sure. Page what, 60, wait, in the workshop? It, packet page 60. 60, yes. Eight oh five um, is unclear, and then uh, line eight thirteen, um, eight twelve clearly indicates that it was Councilwoman McKenzie that was speaking, but eight thirteen has Arnold, and that needs to be corrected as well. Anything further? I don't have anything else. All right. Um, sorry, who was the? Uh, was it Council, Council Member Karn? Council Member Karn and Councilwoman McKenzie. All right. Uh, Council Member Karn, uh, do you accept those friendly amendments? Yeah, I do. Thank you. And uh, Council Member McKenzie, do you? Uh, does your second hold? Yes. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I need to, uh, gosh, I need to amend the motion I made. The, I don't know, but did you make the motion? Who made the, I know I seconded it. The motion for the, for the January 16th um, meet, minutes. I did have another correction. Um, which, this which is for, This is the, the regular session. This was after we came out of executive session on the January 16th meeting. Oh, um, so there's one more correction to, to the January 16th, 2024 regular session. So I had it on another page. Right. Okay, what's your, so, so you so want you, to make a you, substitute you, motion? With yes, a substitute motion. Okay. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Council Member Carn. Go ahead, with the discussion. Yes. Line 1408 after we come out of executive session. In between actions, so this should be in between the actions. The mayor says we are not adjourned and ask, is there a motion out of executive session? That's missing. Is there a motion out of executive session? Line 1408. Any further discussion? No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That is unanimous. Okay. 
Next item is regular session minutes dated February 5th, 2024. Is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? Yes, I have several. And so the motion, I guess, in this in terms of with these revisions, line 1649, it says Councilwoman Arnold. It should say Councilwoman McKenzie. And I say, well, I have a motion that we discuss the travel policy. That is me speaking. Line 1650, that is Councilwoman McKenzie, not Councilwoman Arnold speaking. Lines 16 through 1653 all the way to lines 1673, 74 rather, 21 lines is McKenzie speaking, not Councilwoman Arnold. And the same thing with the paragraph beginning at line 1734. That's another several lines. It's McKenzie, not Arnold speaking. Line 1741. McKenzie, Councilwoman McKenzie, not Councilwoman Arnold. Line 1812 should be mayor and council, not the mayor's council. Those are mine. Someone else may have some more. Any additional discussion? I have the same items notated. You know, it might not be a bad idea to send these back because it may be some more with with we, with, we've with done that three times we did we, we did we no keep getting back right. the same exact uh incorrect we so didn't get these corrections from you guys the first time around so we did, never had got these corrections oh. for the record okay just um councilwoman arnold in the last meeting mentioned that in the february 5th we didn't give you the actual lines in the last meeting and you're correct about that but she did say that those minutes from February 5th were incorrect and that we wanted somebody to go back and look at it because they were saying it was her speaking when it was actually me. And I, I believe you responded that it was because of the fact that the person was listening and they might have gotten our voices mixed up. And there was a lot of confusion there because actually Councilwoman Arnold is being credited in the discussion with making a motion that she never made. And so we kind of messed, messed that up, you know. So I can understand how somebody recording it uh, became confused, but we do need to make sure that the things that I said, I either get the credit or get blamed for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll take the credit and I'll take the blame. All right, so. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that is unanimous. The next item is workshop minutes dated February 5th, 2024. Is there a motion? Motion. Thank you, Councilmember Carnes. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilmember McKenzie. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Count, uh, Councilmember Carnes, what is your vote? Aye. All right, that is unanimous. Thank you. Next is regular session minutes dated February 19th. Is there a motion? Motion. Thank you, Councilmember Carn. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilmember McKenzie. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That is unanimous. Next is workshop minutes dated February 19th. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Councilmember McKenzie. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Thank you, Councilmember Arnold. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, that is unanimous. Next is regular session minutes dated March 4th. Is there a motion? Motion. Thank you, Councilmember Carn. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilmember McKenzie. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, that is unanimous. And lastly? Workshop minutes dated March 4th, 2024. 
Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Council Member McKenzie. Thank you, Council Member Arnold. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Council Member Gay, you were in favor? I'm in favor. Thank you, sir. All right, that is unanimous. Finally. Got remarks of citizens next. The first person to sign in is Danny Tate, 1852 Vesta yeah. Avenue, to discuss crime. And uh, we're doing a project, uh, two houses up at the corner of uh, Rugby and Flowers. And, uh, and, you know, I've done quite a few houses right here in College Park. I live here in College Park. And, uh, and I have the opportunity to invest me and my investment money in anywhere in Metro Atlanta. I choose to invest my dollars right in my neighborhood, right in my city. And my last six projects have been right here. And my next four after these two are playing right here at College Park. And uh, I don't ask for much, but, you know, and crime does happen, you know. But what I'm most upset about is the response. And we got the College Park police in here, and this is, you know, I'm not, I'm for the police. And I, and I love my city, and I love the police here. But the way that they do things stinks. It just stinks. Okay. Uh, like, for, um, like, for instance, just last Friday morning, they came to the new house that we we're building up there, and they stole a four-ton unit and a three-ton unit. And that's not the only crime. I personally, this is the worst project that, you know, that I've done. I've lost over $30,000. You know, the two, what they stole the two-ton units, before that, they stole my trailer, my cover trailer, all of my tools in it. Before that, and my general contractor, they stole his 12-foot uh, uh, flatbed trailer. And before that, they went into the house next door, and they stole the furnace out of it. We also own 2341 Road. Okay, they have been up there three times. They have been up there more. I don't even bother calling the police. But, and, but what ticked me off about this weekend right here was that we have cameras there. We have everything on camera. I'm telling College Park police, okay, we got it on camera. And the sad part is, right there on the corner of Rugman Flowers, there's a tag reader. If you come off loud and going up to Flowers before you go, you got a tag reader right there. And I'm telling them, Come up there and reach tag. I even seen the U-Haul truck. Uh, I, like I live on Vesta, it was that loud Vesta parked on the East Point side. And I went and looked at my camera, and I and I seen that that was the same U-Haul truck. If they would have bothered to take a little time, and, and like I found out this morning that U-Haul reported that trailer stolen. If the tag readers worked, if they were working like they're supposed to, they were responding like they. Were, I believe that my two units were still in the back of that trailer. That trailer took off about, and I've got to do the, you know, the, the, the detective work myself. All the, all of the information that I found out is, be, like I say, is because of me. They have the they, they, they should be able to call Thank you, sir. That. Hold on, sir. You, your, your time has expired. Okay. Please continue. Well, hold on. It needs a motion to be motion to extend. Motion to continue. Thank, for how long, Councilman Carr? That uh, until he finishes. Okay. All right. Is there I, 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 hold, I, I, hold on one hold on one second, Mr. Tate? Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilmember Gay. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. All right. Please okay. go ahead. Okay. okay. But, uh, I'm just saying, though. Uh, you know, you know, we can put a man on the moon. They got that specific <laughs> tag reader. They should be able to dial into that tag reader if they would have simply got that tag. I can confirm it on my video. I would have my units back. That's over ten thousand dollars worth of theft. The insurance is going to cover, but then they're going to turn around and a problem. Like I say, I live here. I invest in this area. Pay taxes in this area, and I'm and, and I'm telling the College Park police over the weekend. 
I'm not asking for much. Just do me a solid. I'm, I'm literally begging. What about the tag reader? Well, come to find out the tag reader doesn't work. If it doesn't work, get it off my property. And is that on my property? I mean, it's in the, at, at, at evening. But if, if it's not working, just go put it in, in the trash. Don't give me a sense of security. And when they put that there, I'm saying, oh, okay, wow. Okay. These, these folks are serious. The last two major deaths, when they stole my trailer, they right there with $7,000 trailer and, and two. And, 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 and then also, they come up there, they do the report, uh, hand it to the detective. The detective called me two weeks later. Come on, man. Y'all can't be serious, are you? So, so, you know, like I said, I know they have their rules, but there's no way in the world that that tag reader is right there and they can't dial into it and try to solve the crime right then and there. That could save me at least $10,000. And this is great. So, and I, I've got a lot more to say. I'm just telling you, you know, and I've done and this and I've done projects on this side of the tracks. All my death happened right over there. You would think that that's the good part of town. So like I say, crime happens. What is killing me is the response from College Park Police. It's just like, why you well, I said, why you the car? But when they took my units this time, they actually hurt me and they hurt my business. And I was trying my best to get them to respond to me. Get up in that trailer so y'all can look. And I, and, and I think somebody, I, like I heard Scuttlebutt in the, in, the, in the neighborhood, that they might have still been in the train. But you know, because of the tag reader is, is uh, not working, I got it on tape, nothing. And they were saying, well, we got to wait till money to CID come here, all this other crap. So anyway, I do have a lot more to say, but I'm not going to take any more time. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Next is Natasha Barnett, 1786 Rugby Avenue, to discuss general. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Dr. Elizabeth Federick, a behavioral coach, said, people will work really hard to secure the role of the victim because they are so offended that you had the audacity to expose their true colors. A blatant inability to take accountability, resulting in the deflection, justification, or abandonment whenever you express hurt, is a common trait seen in covert narcissism. Covert narcissists are a bit tricky to understand. They're often very friendly, helpful, and likable to most people. They work hard to maintain a public persona of this all-around good person but when they don't get their way, these behaviors take a quick turn. They can be hard to identify because they gain their reputation of being so likable through tactics such as manipulation, people pleasing, being overly friendly and well-mannered, making everyone laugh, and you know, being the yes person and so on. Covert narcissists are also hard to spot because they claim to be very self-aware. They, they talk nonstop about everything they're reading, learning, and doing for self-improvement, and yet, when you look a bit closer, they're not changing much. They're pretty effective at going unnoticed because their behaviors are often under the radar, being either passive aggressive or so that they can easily deny that behavior, or when they are more obvious, it's rarely done in front of other people. Because much of this is done under the radar, they can easily make you feel like you are crazy or that you're the problem because they'll often deny, deflect, or justify their behaviors resulting in you thinking, I must be the issue, or something I missed or misunderstood. When you finally had enough and call out that behavior for exactly what it is, brace yourself for how quickly they call you toxic, crazy, hypocritical, all while they start working really hard to get everyone else to support their narrative, highlighting themselves as the victim in the chaos they've created. Don't continue to be gaslighted. Get clear on your truth, take ownership, accountability for your role in the situation. Well, what does this have to do with College Park, you ask? A lot. The truth is, we as citizens are responsible for what we're seeing in our city today. We own our complacency and are accountable for being uninvolved until things began to take a direction that struck us as odd, concerning, or downright alarming. The good news is your awareness is not the end. It should be the beginning. Stop listening to what people want you to listen to and being triggered into being emotional. Go seek information from the sources for yourself. 
get the facts beyond the feelings, and you may just find that you've been misled or misinformed, either intentionally or unintentionally. When a fellow citizen mentioned a 200-plus page document in the mayor's lawsuit, I told myself, I'm donating my time. Thank you. In the mayor's lawsuit, I told myself it was a lot, but definitely important enough to dig into. Well, page 98, 198 of the exhibits is the beginning of the copy of Stanley Hawthorne's 12-page resignation letter dated January 17th, outlining what he referred to as an act of vengeance and retaliation when two members of the council, Councilman Karn and Gay, voted to terminate his employment for cause, while the other two members of council, Councilwoman Mackenzie and Arnold, abstained. Despite the legalese you'll need to use a dictionary's help to get through, there are complaints in plain text that are hard to dismiss and frankly understand the basis for. Here are the excerpts from that 12-page letter. As the new council has only been in office since January 1st, or 16 days, there's a limited window for determining that I committed an offense of Section 91A, which outlines the six criteria determining termination for cause. At the new council's initial meeting on January 2nd, I presented a City of College Park organizational orientation, in particular outlining the roles, responsibilities, powers, and duties of the council and the city manager as cited from the charter sections 1-3, 4-1, and 4-7. In citing these sections of the charter, I was careful to advise the new council of the importance of the city manager fulfilling all of the powers and duties entrusted to the city manager, and that I would not be shy in fulfilling the requests of the charter, the highest local law of the city of College Park. And in particular, the first power and duty listed to see that all laws, ordinances, are enforced, in, including by the council. I also apologize in advance if my fulfillment of this duty ever offended any of them. During the January 2nd regular meeting of the new council, unknown to the city manager and announced to the general public ahead of the publicly posted meeting agenda, Councilman Karn introduced at the meeting an omnibus packet of 14 distinct motions largely intended to reduce the role of the mayor and to, produce ad and to provide administrative powers to the council. The 14 separate motions without explanation or voice provided to the public were all approved in a single motion. Upon realizing this drastic potential change to my duties and responsibilities as city manager, I reviewed my employment agreement for what I believed was a transgression of my role and contract, citing section 9-2, termination. As I determined from a professional assessment standpoint that I could no longer be successful in my role as city manager with this unanticipated change in my powers and duties, I decided this would, section of my employment agreement would be an appropriate course. Thank you. Sh Sherry Godfrey has, thank you. On page 203, it addressed where, on January 9th, the former city manager learned that a member of his staff had sealed an egress door between the mayor and legislative assistance offices. In placing an immediate call to the public works director, the now current acting city manager, he advised me that he'd been directed by Councilman Karn and Councilwoman McKenzie to seal the door, a clear violation of the charter in, the city, in that the city manager had not authorized such an administrative undertaking. The mayor was also not advised prior to the sealing as a courtesy at a minimum. I directed the public works director to remove the seal. Following my directive, I asked the chief building official for his independent and professional assessment of the egress closure. Marcus Robinson provided a solution and path forward after consulting the fire marshal with the assistance of the Space Management Committee, Director of Public Works, and approval by the city manager, the area in question can be properly adjusted to remove the door and replace with a wall. He attached a space allocation request as a reference for future alterations inside City Hall and offered to assist after a clear decision was made. Councilwoman McKenzie sent an email stating in part, 
The request made concerning the sealing of the interior door was not an ordinance change or official event. It was simply an administrative request on part of four council members at separate times. At the time, at this time, the mayor is utilizing the executive reception area as her own private office. All the wall hangings, pictures, and items throughout the office are hers and related to her. However, this is an area that's shared by all five members of the governing body. It gives the impression, though, that our visitors, to our visitors, that it is solely a space for the mayor. I have no problem addressing the issue in a council meeting, but it definitely does not seem necessary to waste the public stakeholder's time with discussions that can be addressed through the inner office communication with the city manager. You don't want to waste our time with transparency, but you want to waste our money with unnecessary drastic actions by staff. Instead of everyone solving a problem by bringing their own personal items to better identify the shared space, the decision was made to wall off her door. As I stand before you today, that door is now a wall. You went on a retreat after sealing a door in her office, but only ever mentioned what she did or didn't do to support your narrative. Twice a month you sit on this dais to do the work of the city, as though the contention and lack of cooperation we see is either all in our minds or merely a flame fanned by the mayor. Based on the words in your email, the council is holding both the gas and the lighter in this situation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. The next person on the list is Michael Tezzino. Um, I'll sign that list in there. Okay. Um, next is uh, Mr. Bobby Wilson, 3271 Main Street, to discuss the farm. <laughs> to this distinguished group here tonight, those who live, work, play, and visit College Park, this great city of ours. I want to say thank you for allowing me to come before you tonight to talk about some real positive things that's going on on the north end of this great city of ours at 3271 Main Street in College Park, Georgia. I often tell a lot of the young people that I work with that you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. I want to thank that Metro Atlanta Urban Farm is part of the solution. We have on Earth Day coming up on the 19th of April, B103 and its three other subsidiary radio stations will be live at Metro Atlanta Urban Farm from 6 o'clock in the morning until about 2 o'clock in the evening. We're excited about that. <clears throat> this is Earth Day celebration. We have AARP coming out to film at Metro Atlanta Urban Farm on the 20th of April. On the 25th of April, we have a group from Washington, D.C. We have two distinguished guests coming from rural development as well as NRCS. And we also have our state directors from the state of Georgia that will be there talking about the thing that we can do in urban agriculture and what farmers need to do. I'm proud to say that I am a farmer. I said that at a meeting just this past week. And said, I know you from somewhere, Bobby. And I told him, well, I was a 2000 CNN hero, 2022 CNN hero. I'm proud to say tonight that I'm bringing that class of CNN heroes to the to the city of College Park with the hope that we can take the work that we have done to
to another level. And I want College Park to be a part of that. So I'm inviting you. This faith-based initiative that will take place on the 25th of April is centered around faith, food, and land. And we want you to be a part of that with more you, than sir. 100 on people one. in attendance. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, James Walker, Rugby Avenue. Your topic of discussion not listed. Mayor and Council again. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Glad to be here. Uh, I am here again, unfortunately, to let everybody know uh, that we do have a problem in, about crime. Uh, my yard this weekend was vandalized by a criminal who stole a car in broad daylight at Barrett Parkway, proceeded to come up Napoleon, turned on rugby, I guess, ran into my yard, knocked over my mailbox, and a stop sign post. Now, what's interesting to that is the police officers, they showed up very timely, cleared out the accident within 15, 20 minutes, very helpful, very friendly. They did a phenomenal job. So credit is due to them. Where the blame lies is that when I asked the police officers and several other people about the cameras in Bear Park, they told me they did not work. So I ask you, how can we spend six to eight hundred thousand dollars on bathrooms and not have the cameras that we already have paid for not operational? That breeds liability. That's dangerous, and what that does is give us a false sense of security. I was also told that we had about 50 cameras in the city that do not work. Now, how we have a, a, a mayor and a council, and this happened last year, I, I guess, uh, to have the fiduciary duty of overseeing this great city, but cannot make sure that our cameras, our police cameras are operational. As Mr. Tate said, that had they been operational, perhaps we could stop some crime. Perhaps we can ward off criminal activity. But I tell you who do know the cameras don't work are the criminals. For anybody to be brazen enough to sit up in broad daylight at 12 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon when women and children and families are in the park and steal a Kia car which I did see over there before, and run down rugby, crash into my mailbox and leave, and vanish into the wind like a ghost with nobody knowing who they are. That is unacceptable for College Park. But yet still, we can run around and spend money on things that we didn't sign up for. I'm also to understand that this was not even in last year's budget. Apparently, uh, Mr. Michael Hicks brought this to council's attention last year and nothing was done to it, done about the cameras. So. Thank you, sir. Uh, you can I'll, continue, I'll motion yeah. to no. continue. Uh, I'm sorry, hold on. All right, is Mr. Okay, Mr. Anderson's yielded this time. Thank you. Furthermore, with the Flint River Project coming, we all know that that's gonna breed more traffic and more people into our cities. What are we telling them? I would really like for council and the mayor to take inventory of the cameras that are not working in the city of College Park and make sure that they are operational. This makes absolutely no sense to me when we can do the basic things, the very basic things to make sure that our citizenry is, is safe and we are protected and that we give our police officers the tools that they need to help catch the criminals in a timely fashion. I just, I don't understand how we can miss such a needful thing, but yet 
ask for attorney's fees and lawsuits that we have nothing to do with. So let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it upon myself. I'm going to install cameras at my house. Officer Porch, all the police officers, if y'all need to know what happened, ask me. Because apparently our city government does not take our safety as seriously as they say. They take other things seriously. But when my family walks in that park at night, and God forbid anything happen to anybody in College Park or anywhere, we will not have the ability to find out or to identify who is over there, save for the people who have ring doorbells and other cameras. So we are going to get cameras. Councilman McKenzie, I called you and you were right on it. We are going to make sure that if you all can't do it, I'm going to do it. And I, and, I, and I strongly encourage other citizens to do the same thing, because just like Mr. Tate said, we have to take it into our own hands and make sure that if the cameras don't work, we have to get them that work. And what I'm going to do is hopefully send y'all a bill for doing y'all's job. The last thing that College Park needs is this. This should have been resolved. I should not be standing here in the wake of all that is going on and have to ask for cameras that we paid for and we're currently paying for now. We deserve better. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Ames? Yes, next is Larry Brady Evans, 2112 West Princeton Avenue. Topic of discussion not listed. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. I like Good evening, Larry. Good evening. I like to greet you all in the greeting first. My name is Larry Brady Evans. I reside at 2112 West Princeton Avenue, College Park, Georgia. I like to greet you all in the greetings of peace and understanding. <clears throat> The issue I have tonight is first, I'd like to say congratulations to you all. Did you enjoy your trip to DC? And it's good to see you all back. And I don't know what you went for, but I hope you got what you went for. Because you all reminded me of one of those old classics. Um, it's called the Wizard of Oz. They was off to see the wizard. You all went off to DC. And in that journey, there was one who needed a brain. Another one needed a heart. Another one didn't have no courage. And it was an old wicked witch who had the spirit of not allowing them on their journey. But as it all turned out, I hope and pray that you all got what you went for. I hope you got a brain, a heart, and a courage to rule and to manage this city. And the last one said, there was no place like home. So for you all to come home, I hope you come with a beautiful spirit that you all left that wicked witch spirit wherever it was. And look forward to doing the right thing here. And I can see and I hear from the citizens of College Park, some just ain't right here. And everybody's slinging mud. And I'm not gonna say they wrong, but I'm not gonna say they right, but 
I have proof of the pudding here. I'd just like to share with you all tonight. This is what's going on right down the street from my home. When I come out of my house and turn left, Someone, uh, he's, hold, hold on, say, hold on, hold on. Dr. Shasulo has yielded his time. Go right ahead, Mr. He didn't sign in. He did not sign in? No. Is anyone who signed in willing to yield their time? Only person left is Pam. I, I motion for him hold. to continue. Okay, hold, please let me let the clerk answer the question first. Madam, Madam Clerk. There's one other person that signed in, Pam Greer. Okay. All right. So, it, she still wishes to talk, so... Correct, ma'am? All right. So, Councilmember Karn, you've made a motion to allow uh, Larry Brady Evans to extend his time for what period? Uh, so, so he can finish his statement. Okay. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Councilmember Arnold. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you all so kindly. As you have a sign at the convention center says it's proof in the pudding. So I got proof here tonight. This is a sign. When I come out my driveway, headed to the golf course, this is what I see. Man, this is what I see. Do you all see this? I want the citizens of the college park to see. That says a lot about our city. It's upside down. I didn't say proof is in the pudding. So, as you all return from the city of D.C., let's get this place right, because I'm here to stay. College Park Bone, College Park my home, College Park where we learn to get along. And when I die, I'll be College Park gone. And I thank you all for hearing me. God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next is Pam Greer, 2034 Cannon Court. Topic of discussion not listed. Good evening. Good evening. My concern about the uh, cemetery over there on uh, Atlanta Street in the Andrew, over there in the apartment, I would like to know who uh, the head of that company needs to be doing something to be doing to like now, because when it gets hot, there's going to be a lot of trees going to be able to put it up. That's my concern. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on to my email comments, uh, Mayor and Council, there's three minutes left on the clock and I have five comments to read. Any direction? I make sure that you read them. Thank you, Council Member Gay. Is there a second? How many of them? There's five. How many did you say there were? There's five. I'm not seconding that. Are we out of time? There's three minutes left. We're out of time. I'm going to start while the time is going. Um, Okay, so the first one, actually, I'm going to skip that one because Mr. Bobby came to the mic already, so it's four. The next comment is from Andy Gosh, and it reads, To all the four council members, I'm asking what your plans are for the city business and finances going forward. There has been a high rate of terminations, resignations, since you all took office. These vacancies interim hold three jobs at one, once people will undoubtedly weaken our structure. It would have the natural side effect of further depleting the city's reserves through significantly higher costing, higher costs while on board, upscale and pay for unexpected mistakes by unprepared staff. I'm also asking who is approving any and all bids. It appears work is being done and how is this arranged? Respectfully, Millie and Andy Gosh. The next comment is from Kenneth Theme and it reads, Mayor and Council, good evening. My name is Kenneth Theme. I reside at 1760 Vesta Avenue. I have been a proud College Park resident since 2001. I'm greatly concerned about the hostile, fearful work environment created by Council since the last election cycle in November 2023. For the city to lose five key employees since January 2024 due to actions of this Council is an unprecedented disgrace and embarrassment. 
In my 23 years of living in College Park, we have never lost so many key employees at one time. Not even during the COVID pandemic did we lose so many key employees, nor were our city employees fearful, fearful to speak out. The current events over the last three months make everyone wonder what the new council's plans actually are for the beloved city. Regards, Keith Dean. The next comment is from Demetrius Taylor, and it reads, Greetings, Mayor and Council. I'm Demetrius Taylor, 16-year resident of the Embarcadero Club Apartments in Ward 2, and you know I'm not the voice of the people. I am the people. Today, I have a few items on my mind that I hope will be addressed soon. First, it saddens me that the retreat did not function to at the expected 100 percentile we as citizens were hoping. It is my continued prayer that the cohesiveness needed to gel the communication gap between the elected body would find its common ground soon to halt all covert operations of city unrest and emotional recourse. Secondly, the stain in which the lawsuit has infiltrated the fabrics of our city's tapestry Tapestry is not a good look, and I'm hoping that we are able to have a proverbial tapestry cleaner on deck that will be able to remove the ugliness so that we can continue to move forward. Yes, these are growing pains, but if we're not willing to grow and do the exercises needed to sustain such growth, then, our, then all those efforts are in vain. Now on to the business of the city. Will someone please go, to, go on public and let citizens know who is the interim economic development director? We are hearing that BIDA has been entertaining LOIs and folks who are interested in develop development within Six West, but my trepidation is do we have the proper people in place to ensure that we can secure the job correctly? What is all of the construction development improvement that is happening with the Brady Trail over on Sullivan Road? I've been seeing what I thought was public works over there for some time it, in what appears to be digging, excavating the land along the trail. Please share what's going on. I am currently out of time. Thank you, Ms. Ames. We'll move forward to the public hearing. The item on the public hearing is for consideration of an action on a conditional use permit application from United Scrap Metal at 2539 Sullivan Road in Ward 2 to allow for a private transloading metal recycling facility serving Georgia Power. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, to repeat, um, we are here uh, and we have United Scrap Metal Georgia LLC in the audience. Um, so they will be representing and will be doing discussion after the presentation. Um, we have a petition for a conditional use permit at 2539 Sullivan Road to allow for a private transloading metal recycling facility in the M2 zone, which is heavy industrial, on a four acre site per the requirements of Appendix A, Article 3, Division 14, Section 3.44, Conditional Uses under Industrial Uses. An approved conditional use permit is necessary for the applicant, who is a diverse supplier to the Southern companies and Georgia Power to convert the vacant facility, which currently exists on site, to a metal recycling and transloading operation of recovered Georgia Power materials. And it will assist Georgia Power in improving their service provision through replacement and retrofitting of their existing infrastructure and provision systems. The applicant actually began providing services to Georgia Power at the beginning of January 2024 in the capacity of storing materials only on site in response to emergency storm restoration, field operations, and grid modernization. They currently hold a business license to only operate as a container storage facility until such time as a conditional use permit is approved or we have a determination um, that the process is complete and the CUP is signed into an ordinance. At that time, they then can begin to um, apply for a new business license to do the recycling and transloading operations. So at this time, they are only operating as a storage facility. 
The property has been vacant for three years. Previously, it was Ryder Cylinder, which was a repair and, refurbish bleh, repair and refurbishment facility for auto cylinders, auto and truck cylinders. Um, it has been, as I said, vacant for the past three years. Um, the applicant will not be changing, adding, or retrofitting, or making any changes to the existing structures. Um, so there will be no need for variances to be requested in addition. All of the surrounding land uses are either industrial or vacant zoned industrial sites. Um, and there is a commercial rail line to the north of the site, the AWP Railroad. The applicant is seeking the conditional use permit in response to the zoning code, which identifies recycling operations and scrap metal yards as permitted uses only with a conditional use permit, which is the ultimate use of the property. In terms of the physical on-site conditions, the as-built layout of the lot and siting of existing structures is considered legally non-conforming as far as side setbacks and site coverage. Those setbacks do not conform to the current requirements of the code that is currently in effect. However, as I mentioned before, they do not need to seek any variances as the actual uh, building. Uh, there will be no changes to the building. Um, landscape buffering, it, buffering is relatively non-existent on the site at this time, and the majority of the site is covered with either concrete or the structures. There is very little landscape and buffering, and that will be a focus um, as far as the conditions that are recommended and that the planning commission recommended. Um, the proposed recycling activities do not involve operation of pollution emitting equipment, handling of appliances or steel shredders. There will be two to three trucks entering and exiting the site on a daily basis. Um, and they will be operating between 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Monday through Friday. There was, they are going to be working only as a private commercial industrial service. It is not open to the public as a public recycling facility. So there will not be customers driving in and out of the site. There would only be the employees and the two to three trucks per day that will be adding to the traffic volume. The organization's environmental management systems and the re recycling industry operating standards certifications ensure regulatory and environmental compliance. And the, the applicant can ex uh, explain in more detail what those are uh, if you have questions about them. Um, Overall, the proposed use does not adversely impact the community. The surrounding properties, which are all industrial in nature, or the economic climate of the city, or the environment. It is allowing, the, and allowing the new use will actually support new business and employment opportunities in the city. The applicant will be adding a potential um, of 20 to 25 workers within, I believe, the first year. So it will be bringing in potential homeowners to the cities who are relocating their families to uh, College Park. Additionally, and this is a bonus, the applicant provides contracted services to the southern companies, specifically Georgia Power, and this encourages goodwill and positive relations in the south. Uh, for Fulton County area. They have also provided a letter of commitment for community engagement with the Main Street Academy, Georgia Fat Favor House, and Ignite, and they also work with the Ronald McDonald Foundation on uh, Recycle Day. And the, joke, and the money that they raise on Recycle Day, which is the one day that it is open to the public, is donated to the Ronald McDonald um, enterprise. Overall, there is consistency and compatibility with surrounding properties and uses. 
the comprehensive plan land use map, which is also industrial, and the associated goals and policies in the comprehensive plan, there is a lesser impact to the roadways that would be anticipated if it was a regular permitted use within an M1 district, such as a, a truck facility or a storage or distribution facility. So that is actually a benefit. Um, the Planning Commission unanimously approved recommendation to the conditional use permit at the January 29th meeting subsequent to two following conditions. Uh, that there be landscaped islands and lighting poles installed in the interior of the parking lot to provide proper lighting and minimize large areas of unshaded pavement. And that it, the city planner has recommended removal of concrete within portions of the required front setback and installation of landscape buffers to improve compatibility with the existing M2 uses along Sullivan Road, which are in front of the subject property. Currently, it's a vet uh, who has been there for many, many years, although there is no landscaping buffer along the fence, um, along the private drive, to screen the, the veterinary facility from trucks that will be entering the, the um, to go to the back. It's like a flag light lot to go to the back of the, um, the lot where the actual recycling activities will be taking place. Um, so landscape materials are going to be re are required as part of the submission um, for the second business license in order to screen the activities from the roadway surrounding uses. And that is it. All right. Any questions? Councilmember McKenzie? No, I'm familiar with the project. Uh, I was actually in the meeting when you had met with the Planning Commission about this. Mm -hmm. So um, all my questions are already answered. Thank you so much. Councilmember Carr? Uh, thank you. Uh, well, I got my questions answered. I met with uh, the outfit that's uh, bringing this. Uh, and uh, it looks like it's something that, that'll be OK. Uh, there's no heating of metal and uh, no uh, odors and uh, loud noise and the whole night. And uh, applicant, are they coming up? Or yes, they, they will come up when. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, any questions that you have of me have completed? Well, I guess I can wait till they come up oh. uh, ahead. All right. Councilmember, no, no questions. I was here the night that they presented as well. Councilmember, no Gaines. questions. All right. If you'd like to um, have the applicant come up. Are we in the public hearing? I haven't opened okay. it yet. Excuse me? But she hasn't opened it yet. Oh. Okay. Is it okay to speak? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. My name is Sadzi, S A D Z I, Oliva, O L I V A. I'm the Vice President of Government Relations and Community at United Scrap Metal. Also present this evening is our President, Brad Serlin, and our Chief Operating Officer, Jim Sauce. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today to answer your questions and those of the public. Just a little bit about United Scrap Metal and its history. We were established in 1978 by our CEO, Marsha Serlin. Today, we're one of the largest full service recyclers in the country. We have facilities in Illinois, Pennsylvania, Missouri, Indiana, Virginia, North Carolina, and Florida. Our mission statement is making a positive impact in the lives of others. And our core values are trust, commitment, loyalty, passion, respect, service, and performance. We're a nationally certified woman-owned business enterprise. We have an award-winning history in philanthropic efforts, safety, quality, industry standards, and we're the fastest growing woman-owned business recognized. We're united strong in our communities. 
economic impact is important to us, charitable and philanthropic endeavors are important, diversity, equity, and inclusion, youth leadership, education and arts, public-private partnerships, and of course, sustainability, which is the nature of our industry. We have a long-standing relationship with Ronald McDonald House Charities across our fo footprint, which demonstrates our commitment to our communities. Through our recycling and fundraising activities, we've raised millions to provide a home away from home for families of hospitalized children facing terminal illnesses. We also have high ratings in sustainability, having a silver medal from EcoVadis, which is an environmental social governance metric assessment. We serve as a resource to government agencies as it relates to the recycling industry. I recently joined the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency Recycling Assessment Advisory Council. Environmental compliance and management of downstream liability is why customers and consumers choose United Scrap Metal. Workforce, health, and safety are a priority. Regulatory compliance beyond industry standards, including Global Bio-Risk Advisory Council STAR, Industry Standard Operations 14001, and Recycling Industry Operating Standards and Certifications every year, and they're up to date. We recycle 97.25% of the material we receive in all of our facilities while putting the balance that really can't go anywhere else into beneficial applications. As to the location here in the city of College Park, we hope to have 25 jobs. It's a $13 million investment for the city of College Park. As you heard earlier, we're a diverse supplier to Georgia Power, Southern Company. And the ultimate use of the property will be metal recycling and transloading operation for recovery of Georgia Power material. Also, as you already heard, we will not have any polluting equipment involved, no handling of appliances or running of steel shredders. While we will not be open to the public, we will plan uh, one community recycling day per year um, in order to meet the needs of the community and for those who want to uh, recycle their material. Um, finally, we have pictures of the planned requested landscape buffering for you to see. Um, and also we have reached out to the Main Street Academy and Ignite for community engagement opportunities. I hope to speak to them soon. Um, and our vision is collaboration with the city of College Park on outreach to the community uh, via social media to create the annual recycling event for both businesses and uh, residents. Any questions? Councilmember McKenzie? Do you have any questions? I said no. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Councilmember Karn? All right, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I saw your uh, illustration of the buffer, and like I mentioned, I would like to see a bit taller trees there uh, due to the height of trucks. We want to make sure that that's, you know, aesthetically pleasing there. So uh, outside of that, it uh, uh, looks okay. All right. Councilmember Arnold? No questions. Councilmember Gay? No questions. All right. Uh, at this time, I will declare the public hearing open. If anyone wishes to speak on this matter, they can approach this time. Good evening. You all says that you won't be serving the public. Who will you be serving? So we'll be serving in the interim, Georgia Power. Can you speak in the mic, please? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. We have to share. Um, in the, so for now, we're serving Georgia Power slash Southern Company. Um, that's our 
main customer right now. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak during this public hearing? All right. Close the public hearing closed. Is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Council Member Karn and Council Member Gay. Any discussion? Hearing none. Move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is consideration of an action to renew the motion to approve the rezoning of property at Zero Welcome All Road from Business Park BP to Light Industrial M1. Is there a motion? Motion. Thank you, Council Member Gay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Council Member McKenzie. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. All right. So that is Council Member Gay, Council Member Arnold, and Council Member McKenzie in favor. Council Member Karn opposed. The motion passes. The next item is consideration of an action to accept $1,600,000. I'm sorry, $1,600,000 for economic development grant from Southwest Atlanta Battery Storage, LLC, to be allocated equally among College Park City Council districts pursuant to the award letter. Is the award letter attached? No, I just got this. Is there an award letter? No. What award letter is this talking about? What award letter is this talking about, pursuant to the award letter? It, it's a grant that is um, supposed to come to the city. A grant that I don't have the, um, uh, the documents with me here. But it's something that I can turn into the clock and tomorrow. For $1.6 million, and you, did you share it with everybody? Did I share it? No, I haven't shared it with anybody. It's, um, a, um, a grand motion that came to me, and then uh, I thought I'd you know, bring it to, to the governing body. With no supporting documentation? I don't have the, doc the documentation with me here that I can furnish it to the club tomorrow. So this is the agenda item addition, with, with no supporting documentation, to accept $1.6 million Madam Mayor, I don't have the documents with me here, but I'm more than glad to give it to the club tomorrow. Okay. Um, when did you get the information? When did I receive the information? Yes, sir. Um, early part of today. Okay. Point of order, have we had a motion on this in a second? No, ma'am. Okay. Because I know we're in a discussion. I just was wondering. What's no, going I don't on. think we're in discussion yet. Cause there hasn't oh, been a you were in a discussion with the city manager. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma ma so, ma um, excuse me. So, did you receive an email, Dr. Adadiran? Did I what? How, how did you become aware of this and uh, of, of this situation? Uh, it was no email. I received um, correspondence. It was not, not an email, no. How did you become aware of this? Uh, How did you become aware of this? Uh, it was an uh, information that was passed down to me from uh, one of the governing bodies. From whom? From, uh, you know, uh, Councilman Gale. Okay. All right. So Councilmember Gay gave you information that we were going to get $1.6 million, but we don't have any supporting documentation. No, with me, but something I'll give to the uh, club tomorrow. Okay. I was I was asked to add it to the agenda tonight. All right. And and moving forward, if you have these printouts, please make sure that the entire governing body, including me, gets them before the meeting. Okay? Okay, no problem. All right. Is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilmember Carn. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That is unanimous. The next item is a consideration on an action to approve the IGA Fulton County Election Services contract to conduct the most referendum. Is there a motion? Motion. Thank you, Councilmember Karn. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilmember Arnold. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. That is unanimous. The next item is the approval of the consent agenda, which consists of consideration of an action on request to amend the date of mayor and city council meeting from May 20th, 2024 to Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024. Consideration of an action on a request to purchase 10 open gate mag magnometers for venue security purposes at the Gateway Arena. Consideration of an action to accept Fulton County Community Development Block Grant Award Park improvements in the amount of $214,125 for Phillips Park Basketball Court in Ward 4. Next is the consideration of an action for, on a request for approval to purchase one set of Jaws of Life extraction tool for the fire department. Next is the consideration of an action on a request to approve the replacement purchases of units 289 and 290 for two Chevrolet Silverado 1500 vehicles for stormwater from Hardy Automotive, Automotive Fleet Group under state contract at a total cost of $87,950 under the 2022-2023 current budget and consideration of an action on a request to purchase and replacement vehicle for the Water and Sewer Division from Griffin Chevrolet in the amount of $49,000, $49,300. Those are all the items on the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Thank you, Council Member McKenzie. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Council Member Arnold. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that is unanimous, thank you. Item 8E is a consideration of an action on a request to purchase a fire department command vehicle purchase of a 2024 Chevy, Chevy Silverado at state contract pricing from Hardy Fleet Group in the amount of $49,542.80 plus $25,072.80 to complete the first responders package for a total cost of $66,372.80. Is there a motion? I move. Thank you, Councilmember McKenzie. Is there a second? Second with discussion. Thank you, Councilmember Arnold. All right, go right ahead. Um, so I just had really a question on the 25,000. Nothing in the backup materials say where we're going to get the additional $25,000 from. That 25 is what we budgeted. Um, in this year's budget, we only budgeted $41,000 for, for the truck. Um, when July came around, uh, the truck was no longer available uh, because of supply chain issues. Uh, when they opened the purchase up again, which was in December, there was an increase uh, of $8,000. So we had to add that on to 41. But then, if you all approve the purchase of the truck, we still have to put lights and sirens on the truck. And that's where the additional 16000 came from. So that's 16000 plus 8000 That's $25,000. Okay, and has um, um, finance told you where they're going to allocate that $25,000 from? Uh, we have some savings okay. in salaries, so we could move that, uh, those funds over. Okay, that was my question. All right, any additional questions? Hearing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that is unanimous. Thank you. Next is the city attorney's report. Uh, excuse me, uh, point of order. We did not, I, I thought correct. maybe I had another agenda item. You sure did. I don't I want apologize. to miss that. I got to look at walk, Oxford Walk. I apologize. Let me back up. So this will be 8E, um, I'm F. sorry, 8F. F. Consideration mm -hmm. of an action to install sidewalks from Oxford Walk subdivision on Fairway Drive to Washington Road. Is there a motion? I move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That is unanimous. Okay, now we can move on to the city attorney's report. Uh, nothing with you, the matter. Next is the city manager's report. Nothing um, tonight. Report of mayor and council. Start with Mayor Bianca Motley Broom. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Well, it has been a very exciting couple of weeks. Um, the, um, I'll wait till you say. I'm good, thank you. So, as I was saying, it's been a very exciting last couple of weeks. We have had the opportunity to be the beneficiary of a $50 million grant through the Reconnecting Communities and Neighborhoods uh, Act for, through the U.S. Department of Transportation. It is such an exciting project that will connect the Atlanta Beltline to the Flint River Trail that goes right by the Finding the Flint Project. And Congressman David Scott has been our champion in getting congressionally directed spending for that project in particular. And that also came through in uh, the last couple of weeks. And so in addition to that $50 million for the region, we're going to be receiving $500,000 uh, for the Finding the Flint project at the headwaters. And it's just such an exciting time. I want to thank Senators Ossoff, Senators, uh, Senators Ossoff and Warnock, uh, Congresswoman Nakima Williams, the Atlanta Regional Commission for all the hard work that they did to get all the cities uh, and the county and all of our partners uh, together on this Reconnecting Communities and Neighborhoods grant. Uh, that They've been hard at work at that for the last year or so, and we are so grateful for their efforts. I also want to thank uh, Airtropolis Atlanta for all of their uh, advocacy and their work to make this possible. This is a big, big deal. It really, really is, because it improves the quality of life for all of our residents. Because when we are connecting in ways that allow us to use other modes of transportation, we're not only improving health outcomes, but we are improving our environment and improving our resiliency. And um, the $500,000 for the Flint will help us get closer to reality in terms of making that a great sustainable project for generations to come. And the good news just keeps on coming. We got $959,752 for a water storage tank, actually to just improve our, uh, our water capabilities, because we all know that we went through some trying times with the deep freeze uh, in December of 22, and we responded to that. We heard you. We recognized that this was not only a problem in College Park. It was, it was throughout the region. but. When we went down, the airport also went down and had some issues. And so I want to thank um, our partners at uh, Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport for being willing to sign on to, to this for congressionally directed spending because they recognize how important it is to make sure that since part of the airport, the arrival, the departure gates, the T gates, the A gates, and the southern half of the B gates sit in the city of College Park, that we need to be hand in hand to make sure that we've got the resources available to service all the people who are not only in our city but coming through our city on a daily basis. Uh, so that project in and of itself helps our resiliency in the event of an, another emergency. And so we certainly appreciate not only Hartsfield-Jackson but again our federal representatives for doing everything that they are doing on our behalf to bring those dollars home to the city of College Park. We've got an exciting opportunity next Thursday, March 28th, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the College Park Library. Congresswoman Nakima Williams, I think I told you about this about a month, month and a half ago, um, she is offering a service, and they're actually doing it in East Point with Senator Ossoff a little, uh, in a couple of days, but we're gonna have Congress in our community from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. next Thursday. Uh, when we were, when all the mayors of the 5th District had lunch with Congresswoman Williams, uh, she told us about this program and I said, sign us up. 
let me know. So I got calls today saying, we're actually doing this. And so if you're having issues with federal programs like Social Security or VA benefits, if you're having issues with getting your passport processed, all of those things that the Congresswoman's office can help with, they will be there at the College Park Library from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. next Thursday. So you have an opportunity. You don't have to go to our district office. You don't have to email them in Washington, D.C. They are coming to us. So please mark that on your, on your calendars, and please make your way over to the College Park Library and take advantage of this opportunity of having Congress in the community. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we had a great opportunity to go see our elected representatives in Washington, D.C. last week, and it was very fruitful. We had the opportunity to see uh, both of our senators, uh, Congressman Scott, and we were able to meet with uh, the staffers in Congresswoman Williams' office, she was right on the floor voting uh, while we were there. And so obviously making sure that our interests are protected and actually doing the job is, is very, very important. But we met with her legislative director, Nick Pennington, and, um, and also her chief of staff, Melanie Farah, and, so, and, and the entire team. And they were absolutely wonderful to work with, and we appreciate all of their efforts. Senator Ossoff's office reached back out, let us know about all the opportunities that are available for the priorities that we have uh, in this upcoming federal budget. And so we will be getting our priorities together to send to them in a formal way in the next couple of weeks, and certainly look forward to that as well. And hopefully in this next budget cycle, when Congress finishes the budget cycle, that. They were supposed to finish in September, but I think they're, they're coming to a close. I think they have to finish it by the 22nd. Um, but when that happens and they go to the next budget that should be done in September, we will have our prior priorities and make sure that we are continuing to move this community forward. We were also in Washington, D.C. for the National League of Cities Conference, and it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I have the privilege of serving on the board of directors of NLC, and our, our meeting revolved around a lot of issues, but one in particular that is so important to communities like ours, rail safety. We don't always know what's going through our city on those trains. And this is a conversation I've had with Chief Elmore more than once. Um, but. The, the tragedy that happened uh, last year in East Palestine, Ohio, really opened up everyone's eyes as to what can go on when a train derails in your city. And the National League of Cities uh, has really moved forward with aggressive action to get Congress to act on this particular matter. The Railway Safety Act of 2023 is a bipartisan bill to do a lot of different things, but in some cases, the trains that are going through our city might have one person on them, maybe two. These are long trains. If something happens, we need to make sure that trains are fully staffed and supported so we've got the communication that we need to adequately respond in the event that something does go wrong. And so the Railway Safety Act of 2023 addresses a number of these issues. I would ask that you look at it, that, that, you, that you get some information on the bill. And if you're so inclined, reach out to our representatives. Let them know how you feel about it. Because there are so many communities across the country that this impacts, and we are not immune to this. this we could be the next East Palestine, and no one wants that. So we need to be loud about our priorities. And this is something that the National League of Cities has, has taken up as one of their championing causes. Because if you have people raising their hands in just about any room uh, and ask them, you know, do you have a, railway or a railroad going through your town, or are you impacted by one? 85 90% of the people in the room will raise their hands because rail is such an integral part to how transportation occurs in our country. However, it's not as safe as it could be with some common sense measures. So I would encourage you, take a look at the Railway Safety Act 2023. If you, if you are supportive of it after you take a look, reach out. Let our elected representatives know, because it is 
vitally important for the safety of all of our communities across the country. I also had the opportunity to moderate a discussion on housing and homelessness that included the Deputy Secretary of HUD, Adrian Todman, uh, and it really did show some of the issues facing cities of different sizes across the country, uh, including one of the things that we see here in College Park, that homelessness has a lot of different faces. It's not just about people who might be living on the street. And there was a consensus in the room that we need to be talking broader about people who are facing issues of homelessness and thinking about how we tackle the problem in a way that's, because there's a lot of folks that just aren't visible who are dealing with homelessness, who might be couch surfing or living in their car or in our, in our situation a lot, living in hotels. And they aren't the face of homelessness that we think of, but they are still impacted by not having safe, stable, decent housing. Uh, it was a wonderful discussion. And um, one of the things that was a topic of it was that we haven't done a great job of stemming the tide of people who are susceptible to entering into uh, homelessness. And that leads us to Friday where we cut the ribbon on the Diamond College Park and the Ion Arts Development right there by the MARTA station, where there are 50 new apartments that are affordable out of a building at the Diamond College Park that has 60 units. And there's a, there's a lot of really good things going on in this city. And that, that event was absolutely a culmination of that. And I want to congratulate the College Park First United Methodist Church, uh, Good Places, uh, and all the partners that worked so hard on that development. Diamond College Park is 100% leased. Um, the full move-in should happen uh, by April or so. And it is, it is a testament to radical leadership and what can happen with a truly community-driven and focused development. And while it took a while and there were bumps and there's, there were fits and there were starts, Friday was a great day. I also want to thank Senator Sonia Halpern for coming and all of the folks who, set, who spent their time celebrating that wonderful event. While I was in uh, D.C., I did get an invitation to go to the White House to talk with four other mayors and, and the national members, I'm sorry, members of the National Economic Council. I joined the mayor of Nogales, Arizona, Athens, Ohio, Opelika, Florida, and Kinston, North Carolina, to talk about how our smaller or medium-sized communities um, might have opportunities to have high-tech manufacturing happen in our cities. And we talked about the need for regional cooperation to make that happen. And I think that we are on the cusp of that, certainly with our relationship with the Atlanta Regional Commission. And I've been having active conversations with them, with Aerotropolis, about how we make sure we are using all of the resources that we have to attract development to our community. Uh, we also talked about workforce development. And I told them about the great things that are happening next door here in College Park at the Promise Career Institute and how we are preparing kids who can walk out of that door and get certifications in a number of different areas that are in high demand in our community. And I also promised them that I would send them an inv invite uh, because when we, when we cut the ribbon there in April, I'm sorry, August, that is also going to be a huge celebration of what this community can do when we work together. So, a few announcements. If you were not looking at our workshop meeting, the airport MARTA station is going to be closed from April 8th to May 19th. They will be running shuttles 22 hours a day from 4 a.m. to 2 a.m. And MARTA is going to continue to promote this and make sure that everybody knows. But tell your neighbors, tell your friends, because that will be a, a huge shift for all of us. But I'm confident that we have been working well with MARTA. Um, our, our amazing 
team at the College Park Police Department has been in conjunction with the MARTA PD to make sure that this is a smooth transition for the six weeks that that station is going to be closed and uh, just look for additional updates as we get closer to the time. Uh, MARTA is actually having an open house on March 28th from 6.30 to 8 at the Southern Regional Medical Center, Education Center, on 11 Upper Riverdale Road. And they're going to be talking about the South Lake Bus Rapid Transit Line. So that should be a very informative discussion as bus rapid transit can really change the shape of an entire region. So we are certainly looking forward to those developments here on the South Side. And I guess it was started about 7, 7 p.m. and it's going to run till 7 a.m. the warming center tonight. Is that right, Chief? Yes. All right. So uh, if you know anyone who needs to get in out of the cold tonight, because we are we've got a freeze warning going on, um, they can go to 3717 College Street and they can stay there until 7 a.m. And please make sure to pass that information along. And. This Saturday, we've got the third annual citywide cleanup. Uh, the idea is that you form a team and tackle an area. So if you want further details, you can reach out to Francis Kennedy at fkennedy at collegeparkga.com. And that is all I have. I will pass it to Council Member McKenzie. Well, thank you, and good evening again, everyone. As we are now more than halfway through Women's History Month, I want to begin this evening by expressing the gratitude that I have personally for serving with amazing colleagues on this council. You know, we made history as the first female majority governing body of the city of College Park. And I don't take this honor lightly, and I look forward to us doing phenomenal work as we put the citizens of College Park first. And then I want to acknowledge every single woman who is a department head or an employee of the city of College Park. Thank you for your service and your commitment to the city. You know, it's not always easy for women who work. We often are expected to perform the same roles at home as we would if we didn't work. Y'all know about that. So you still got to go to work and still go home and do what you would have done if you didn't have a job because you've got plenty of jobs. In addition, I want to show appreciation to those women who are heads of households that work for our city or single parents. My hat goes off to each of you. I have stood in your shoes as a single parent and as a head of a household, and I honor you during this month for all the sacrifices that you make on a daily basis. Next, I want to appreciate all the women that serve on my Ward 1 leadership team, I see some of you here, and our community champions, your dedication and your desire to see Ward 1 move forward is invaluable. And I look forward to making our dream of creating a community where everyone can thrive a reality. We are a great city that has great women that put their hearts into this community, and we are grateful for each of you. I actually had a list of about 60 women I was going to read off, but we, we need to go home tonight, OK? I also want to thank the Community Spotlight for honoring me and my accomplishments in their Women's Empowerment Month celebration which um, article, which was last week. I want to congratulate Director of Chaplaincy, Dr. Marjorie Dent, another amazing woman, for conducting her first training seminar on law enforcement for the chaplains of the city of South Fulton's police department this past Friday. I heard back, I was actually with one of the uh, majors uh, there and the captains, and we heard back from them and the staff, and they said that our chaplain, Dr. Dent, was fantastic. And I'm glad to see partnerships between College Park and our city, 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 sister cities, because you know it takes the whole village, it takes the whole community to make things work. We had an awesome two weeks um, in service to the residents of Ward 1 on March 7th. Some of this will be repetitive, but it's not going to be exactly the same. On March 7th, our governing body traveled to Washington, D.C. to meet with our federal representatives. And the purpose of this 
trip was to thank our, resident, our representatives for their continued support to our city over the past two years and to share our city's 2024 federal legislative agenda and priorities. I was honored to have been elected by my legislative colleagues to be the spokesman or the spokesperson on behalf of our delegation in each of our meetings with Senator Raphael Warnock, Senator John Ossoff, Congressman David Scott, and Con Congresswoman Nakima Williams and their staff. We made great strides, and when we returned home, as you know, we received news that the Senate had voted in favor of the 2024 Consolidated Appropriations Act, and on Saturday, March 9th, our President, Joseph Biden, signed it into law. And so the significance of this act was that it granted 500000 in funding for our Finding the Flint Preserve Project, which will be used to pay for the purchase of seven and a half acres for the preserve and give us the ability to begin to work in the preserve as well. We also, as the mayor has said, we were funded with $959,752 for our College Park Water Supply Project. On, sun on Sunday, March 10th, our legislative body traveled back to D.C. for the National League of Cities Congressional Conference. It was a great opportunity to meet elected representatives from across the country and get involved in, natural, in, in national projects that will present great opportunities to our city now in the present and in the near future. While we were in Washington, we received word from Senators Ossoff, Warnock, and Congresswoman Williams that a $50 million federal investment in the Southside Trail is being made to assist the Atlanta Regional um, Commission project that will build a new multi-purpose trail to help connect schools, hospitals, job centers, and MARTA between the Beltline and the Flint River Trail. Amazing. This is huge for our Flint River Preserve project, but not only for the project, but for our city as a whole, because it's going to bring some additional amenities that we need and that can cause us to be an even more thriving community. Other business that I conducted over the past two weeks in serving the citizens of Ward 1, I want to thank Oxford Walks HOA for inviting me and uh, uh, Sergeant Anthony Peniagua to their March 5th meeting. Uh, we talked on crime, and of course I was open, ask me any questions, I don't have anything to hide. So we answered questions, and I want to thank my colleagues for voting tonight to, to, so that I can go back to Oxford Walk and say, hey, we've got a sidewalk that we can walk safely now from your subdivision to Washington Road. So I truly appreciate you all for that. It's good to see Mr. Bobby Wilson, our CNN hero, here today in the building with us. I was able to tour the urban farm with him on March 8th. And just to start talking about ways that we can partner, because that's actually in Ward 1, how we can partner. And I'm excited about the urban farm's three days of Earth Day celebrations that's coming up. And, and from April 19th, or actually it's more than three days, but from April 19th to 25th. So we'll be putting that out on the calendar and uh, hopefully as much of our community can participate in po as possible. We had a fantastic wine stroll on March 14th, y'all. Uh, Jeff and I were so glad that we were able to attend until the Biden meeting. Biden had a meeting that night, but we got out there at four o'clock and it was so good to see our citizens out there also, uh, we heard that the music on the lawn was fantastic, phenomenal, just having our community come together. I want to thank Ginger and the Main Street Merchants, uh, College Park Recreation. We had golf carts for the first time that would take people from one place to the other, which really helped us to get a feel for the total business, downtown business, business district. So I want to thank everybody that participated in that. We also, um, earlier today, I was called, contacted by Nakima Williams' office about the um, Congress in the Community, which will be held at our public library here in College Park next uh, Thursday, the 28th from 4 to 6. 
And um, as I spoke, her constituent services office, they will be here. And so if you have even veterans affairs concerns, you might be a veteran, you're concerned about some things, uh, anything social security, federal types of programs, and you need some assistance, come to the library next Thursday. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends that they'll be there from four to six constituent services from our congresswoman to assist you. And yes, I also attended the ribbon cutting for the Diamond Project and Iron on Saturday, um, well, actually Friday, and that was a great opportunity to see that project. I was involved in that project uh, from 2020, and to see the, the manifestation of it was amazing, and we're looking forward for some of the, those of you that have not been over there, you need to come over there. Push Push is doing some great things, and they're gonna be having some shows. There's an there's a open area that's kind of like a cafe. It is an added plus to our community. On March 16th, I attended the Fulton County Board of Commissioner Vice Chair um, Khadijah's annual salute to citizens. That was phenomenal as well. We got to see quite a few people there, and uh, you know she was able to celebrate them. I also want to thank the South Metro Women's Democratic Women's Council and Ward 4 Know Your Neighbors for having me as their guest speaker for their Women's History Month program on diversity, equity, and inclusion. That was also the this past Saturday. Yesterday, I had the honor and the privilege to attend the Spring Into Favor House third annual track meet hosted by Rex and Sabrina Willis at Badgett Stadium. We had over 350 youth that competed in this track meet yesterday. We had more than 1,500 persons in attendance. It was a great day. And I'm happy about what Rex and Sabrina and Favor House and their organization continues to provide for our citizens. They are giving our youth, most of the youth in their tra Favor Track program are College Park youth. And so this is opening up doors, opportunities, and al alternatives for our children because our children are our future. Some of the ward updates that I have is that we're planning to set a date shortly for the opening of our Barrett Park restroom. It will be sometime in April. Again, once uh, Michael Hicks and I are still working on that in conjunction with the city manager. I have also uh, received submissions from our city hall employees in the submission block box. Uh, for the break room upgrade, I want to thank those persons that gave uh, suggestions, and I will be sharing that with the city manager to discuss uh, what we can do and what kind of budget might be there to really spruce up our break room, make it something so that when you're on the job, you feel like you have a place where you can get away and relax and feel appreciated. We also have, um, again, thank, um, thank my colleagues again for the sidewalks to be uh, added, not just just for, from the Oxford Walk to Washington, but we also are looking for other areas, and I have other residents in Ward 1 who would like to see sidewalks. So that is going to be an ongoing project, and we will be looking for continued funding for that. Also, my Ward 1 survey, I want to thank everybody from Ward 1 that filled out the survey that we circulated in the community earlier in this month. And uh, just to kind of add on to Danny Tate and James Walker's concerns, we saw in our survey that more than 90% of the persons who were surveyed were very concerned and wanted upgrades in our security cameras throughout the city. The security cameras we have are years old and you know when it comes to technology things are constantly being updated so it's not our police uh, personnel's uh, fault it's the fact that we just have to stay up to date with technology so I am looking forward to in our new budget to be able to make sure that we include the type of technology equipment that we need so that we don't continue to have the situations that we were hearing about today. We also need to evaluate the tag readers and see if there's an issue with that. So we will be looking into that. In addition to uh, Pam Greer's concerns about the cemetery, I toured the cemetery with Ms. Greer and actually Dr. Williams and I 
looked at that as we drove by there a couple of days ago. We are concerned with the, out, the overgrowth there in the cemetery. It is really uh, disappointing to look at it. So we need to be able to address that. I will be pulling together a couple of folks in our uh, community champions so we can kind of discuss this and then also get it back to the city. So I just want you to know, Pam, that we heard you and we've heard uh, and we've seen the condition and we're going to get on that. Tomorrow, I have the honor and the privilege of being the career day speaker for fifth grade students at Fieldwood uh, Elementary School. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to bring some College Park bling bling and I tell them, you know, to get their parents to get registered to vote and vote. Uh, next Wednesday, we are going to be having the collaborative firm's uh, South Metro Development Outlook Economic uh, Development uh, Conference at the GICC. I don't know if there's registration still available, but that should be a very good opportunity even to learn more about what's going on in our city, and I plan to be in attendance. I'm also having a board meeting for all of my board appointees this, this Saturday. We will not be having a community meeting for Ward 1, but I will be meeting with my board appointees. The next Ward 1 meeting should be held sometime in April. Also in April, I will begin my in-person office hours. We just now got the, some things straightened out in some terms of renovations to our offices. These offices had not been renovated in, since this building had been built. And the furniture, I think I may have mentioned to you, it looked like something from office liquidators, uh, you know, anyway, uh, 30 years ago. So we are, are doing some upgrades, and we are also looking forward to being able to have a space where we can have our citizens come and, and, and they can feel comfortable as well. We also, my final remarks are that we are in the holy season of Ramadan, which officially began on March 12th and will continue through April 9th. So I want to uh, let everybody be aware of that. Easter will be celebrated on March 31st. And our senior Easter event at College View Hills that I will be doing with my seniors there will be held next, on next Wednesday, March 27th. We're going to have our own Easter egg hunt. Uh, at, also on March 28th, I want to remind everybody that at Badgett Stadium at 1030, we are having our, our citywide that, um, Easter egg hunt for our children. I'd like to end today's comments with a, uh, a quote that was made by Mr. Alex Santiago of the Human Foundation. He was one of the persons that Vice Chair Khadijah honored when I was there on Saturday. And this is what he said, and I want you to kind of marinate on this. Service is the rent you pay for living. Service is the rent you pay for living. It's an honor and a privilege to pay my rent to the citizens of Ward 1 in College Park every day. I appreciate you. We are going to put you first, and it is an honor to serve you. Thank you so much. Councilmember Carn. All right. Well, see those consent agendas come in handy sometimes. So you save us a little <laughs> we need time. <laughs> but, uh, I thought we were going to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had 20 minutes right. worth of comments, though. All right. Uh, I'm not going to be very long. Uh, I think uh, we covered most uh, of the mayor and the councilwoman covered a lot of what I talked, wanted to speak about. Uh, great meetings up in D.C. We brought money home for our community, uh, for our neighborhoods, for our blocks, and we are very proud of that. Uh, the NLC convention was really great, very, very informative. Uh, one of our keynote speakers uh, the second morning uh, was a fellow by the name of Joseph R. Biden. Uh, perhaps you've heard of him. Uh, uh, the president spoke at our event. Uh, it was really great. I've been to, I've seen three presidents, I think, speak at the NLCs. Um, always good information, best practices. Uh, we see a lot of things that cities are doing that we're going to adopt and take on ourselves. Uh, city manager, uh, I don't know how often we check those tag readers, but uh, I think we need to do a full assessment of all of the uh, 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 flock camera tag readers that we do have citywide, um, as well as the cameras. You know, we want to make sure everything that we paid for and purchased is working properly now. Um, <clears throat> 
couple of things that are going on I uh, wanted to just uh, touch on a bit here. Um, it is Women's Month in College Park. Uh, I was raised in a house full of women. Mom, grandma, and my two sisters. And uh, in College Park, you know, women are without question the backbone of this community. Um, and we honor them in every way that we can. Um, and we will continue to do that. Uh, the Saturday citywide cleanup, uh, I'm going to be rounding up volunteers. I got two locations I want to cover. Uh, I want to cover my side of Godby Road as well as uh, portions of Camp Creek. And Kenny, you know, you know I'm going to be calling you. Uh, you know, one of the things I've seen in uh, other communities are community benefit uh, arrangements and agreements. And this is something that's done in lots of communities throughout this country. We've got to be more cognizant with those things. You know, when I first got into office, I was demanding and expecting more community benefits for many companies, developers, and outfits that came into our communities. Now, city manager, uh, some of these cities have codified uh, community benefit agreements into the codes, into the cities, uh, whereas if an outfit does want to come into the city, we want and expect a direct community benefit for any and all outfits. I think we more so need that expectation as opposed to other cities. One of the major reasons is because we're a lot smaller than other cities. Being only 11 square miles, we've only got so much space to put in so many projects and developments. Um, a very honorable elected official who has passed on told me years ago, he said, Joe, do not let these developers or corporations just come into your community, uh, build whatever they want to build and reap millions of dollars in profits from their corporation and leave the community like, hey, thanks a lot, community. Uh, thanks for uh, helping me make all this money. You make sure that your community gets something when these developers come in. And we have to make sure that a community benefits package is presented and expected uh, from here on out. And city manager, city attorney, I don't know how we put something together like that. I know Cleveland is one of the biggest cities that has something like that. But there are dozens of cities that have something along those lines uh, with some expectation of minimum expectations in terms of what they bring to the table uh, for the community. I remember when I, uh, there was a warehouse that wanted to go in on Sullivan Road. And we made sure that they committed to over 1,200 linear feet of community sidewalks and other benefits, uh, things like this. So we want to make sure if you are going to work in this city, if you're going to work and develop in this city, that the community is going to get something out of it, the community directly. Now, we're not going to hold you hostage, but the community is going to benefit uh, when these outfits come in here. And we have to make it our business to make sure that that happens. Um, I definitely have to put a, a special thanks and shout out to uh, Congressman David Scott. While our Congress members are great, Congresswoman Nakima Williams is absolutely tremendous, uh, as well as Senator Ossoff and Senator uh, Warnock, who we met with in D.C. Uh, Congressman Scott has, has come, through us, come through for us many, many, many times. Uh, he is dedicated to College Park, and as this will be his last year representing the city of College Park, we're sad to see him uh, uh, redistricted out of Fulton County in its entirety, as well as out of College Park. Uh, so that's not a good thing for College Park, but uh, the good news is that he's still our Congress member from here until the end of the year. Um, I would like to arrange some type of a, an event for Congressman Scott here somewhere in the city, if possible, if, if there's interest amongst this body. Um, I think he has certainly earned that and uh, uh, even have him come down or, 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 or have a reception for him, something along those lines. He committed to the job fairs that he has every year with us in our convention center, the largest job fairs in the state. He picked College Park for 18 years and going strong. Plus, uh, I'm assuming it's coming up, it usually comes up in April, um, the, the job fair. So uh, I'd like to make sure that we recognize him and do something extra special uh, for our congressman, being that this is his last uh, year representing us. So I definitely would like to uh, look at something along those lines. Let's see, I think that's about, oh, Michelle. Uh, 
I wanted to just get an update at some point how, how we're looking with our parks and rec, uh, the free programming program. So uh, at some point, I, I'd love to see on the next at the next council meeting that you know we roll this thing out. You know we're we're. Uh, Oh, e excellent. You must be psychic. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm really excited about that. Uh, the buzz is going around our community about that, so the programming and how it works. So uh, people are very, very excited about that. Uh, the other program we want to make sure that we uh, kick in, we talked about this at a couple of meetings. Uh, some of our residents of a certain age, when they have troubles, difficulties uh, with web-based challenges, applying for the online benefits and such, and uh, just uh, tax difficulties and things like collecting unemployment and Social Security benefits, health care enrollment, uh, they can't afford to miss those deadlines and application processes. And there's a lot of confusion in web challenges for folks. So we are definitely still looking at putting that customer service uh, node into uh, the city, a staff member, and we're going to kind of work on ironing out what that looks like in terms of direct service to folks that are most in need of service. And this may not be someone that just sits in the office and waits for the phone to ring. We want this person out in our community, uh, on our streets, in our apartment communities, and, and meeting where they'll be available to help uh, folks process through uh, this uh, this modern day world. So we want to continue to work on that. Um, you know, a lot of residents may wonder, you know, there are a lot of transitions and, and, and changes that are going on in this city. Well, you know, it's the beginning of the year and when you have 50% of a new government, you're going to get transition and changes. Um, a lot of people may ask, you know, why these changes were made, and there have been a lot of changes made this year. Well, the reason is because there were some staff members that weren't quite meeting expectations. And we had to make some necessary changes. Um, our new city manager, Dr. Adadirin, uh, has hit the ground running, and he faced a monumental task. But I can tell y'all one thing that I've known about him since he's been here. He has high expectations, and he has a high bar, and he will not accept mediocrity. Even before he became city manager, when he came in as our public works director, we got about 36, 37 employees over there. Dr. Emanuel had to dismiss 26 of them, 26. Now, that may seem extreme, but it was something that may be needed and was needed because they did not meet his expectations for what we needed to do in this city in terms of getting things together here. And, you know, we've got to raise the bar in expectations. And raising the bar, sometimes everybody's not going to like it. But at the end of the day, we have to do the best for our community and our residents, putting them first. And if somebody's not meeting expectations, well, hey, we need to get someone that can handle the expectations and meet the bar. And that includes all of us. And uh, we're all a work in progress. I think this city is doing much better. And I'm hearing many, many comments of the differences that we are seeing. Uh, is any city perfect? No, of course not. But we're moving forward. And we have made some extraordinary changes and some unique, unique uh, improvements to this community and things that have never been done. And I get the feeling that we're just getting warmed up. But yes, transitions are very uh, jarring. But uh, with change uh, comes, comes some turmoil, some agitation. But we're going to try to keep moving forward and do our best for this community. Uh, one thing I can say about this group here is that they truly want the best for this city. Everybody has their way of going about that route. So there's diversity in terms of process. There's diversity in terms of, of how we get to that goal. But I do truly believe that everybody up here, they make a decision and they make it their best bet for our community and for our residents, putting them first. Uh, but Dr. Emanuel, I just want to let you know, I am proud of the work you've been doing and you have been hitting the ground and doing the business that, you know, a lot of people don't want to do. 
but uh, it has to get done. We have to improve service on every level, on every department, on every block, and uh, we are moving towards that goal. So I want to thank you, and I want to thank all of the staff that's been working hard and meeting and raising the bar. We are in a bit of a transition, but we're coming out the other side of this doing better, bigger things for this community. And I think in the end, at the end of the day, when you look at the end of this year, you're going to see major changes in the city of College Park. So uh, I'm excited, and I'm looking forward to good things happening in this city. So uh, hang in there with us. We're transitioning. But uh, sometimes you may pass by a construction site, and it says a sign that says, uh, excuse our mess, renovations uh, in progress. Well, we are in progress, and we are making renovations. Uh, but when we uh, come out of this transition, uh, you're going to see a market improvement in this city and in the quality of services that you're going to get. Uh, this budget is coming up, and we're being very particular about this budget. Uh, city manager has had folks come in leaner. All departments are coming in leaner because we have to make room to make sure that what the residents are expecting and want, that there are funds for that as well. And uh, when we do this budget this year, you know, we are going to try not to spend money on things that our residents aren't interested in, bottom line. That's going to be the first bar as far as I'm concerned. When someone has an expenditure, my question is, how is this going to directly benefit the residents? And if you can't defend that and justify that, I'm not supporting it going in the budget. Uh, so we're going to do things uh, a little differently. And we've got some bold leadership uh, with our uh, doctor here, and uh, I believe he's pointing us in the right direction. So uh, that's all I got. Councilmember Arnold. So I have to add to the comments of my uh, all of my colleagues so, so far. This has been a remarkable two weeks. It really has. And um, I would first like to thank our federal lobbyist, uh, Ms. Jennifer Emo, for all of her hard work, her guidance um, with helping us to outline our federal priorities and assisting us, this entire body, with articulating uh, those priorities to our federal delegation. It was amazing to have the opportunity to meet uh, Senator Warnock, Senator Ossoff, Congressman um, Scott, and uh, the members of Congresswoman Williams' office, and to just sit down and talk to them about our city, the needs of our city, and to learn about the opportunities of new and continued funding that we can pursue and bring back home to our city for our citizens. So I'm really excited about those relationships. And um, like I said, you've already heard about the, the money bag that was brought back. Um, I uh, also, uh, I mean, the, the National League of Cities, have, just having that opportunity to engage with other leaders from other cities around the country was also, it was just an amazing opportunity to talk to other people, to hear what other cities are going through, to bring back some of those best practices, understanding things that other cities are leveraging um, to make their cities uh, more efficient um, and uh, more effective. And, and, you know, learning about the flexibility because everything can't always be so rigid, right? So, um, and it's always good to be able to hear what other people are going through because sometimes you know when you're you're sitting there and you're like man this just doesn't make sense but if everybody's kind of dealing with the same thing uh, learning some of those the, the steps that they've taken um, is always a, a great uh, opportunity I'm hopeful that the the information from both of those trips will uh, continue to prove um, to be fruitful for our city and our citizens in between those trips, um, I had the opportunity to um, meet up with the College Park Lady Rim Rockets for their media day on March 9th. 
Uh, I'm rooting for the team as they strive for the championship. Um, thank you to Mr. George Oliver for in the coaching staff, the entire support team, and the parents for supporting these young ladies in their endeavors. And thank you for the invitation to allow me to participate. Now, I need y'all to bring home the trophy. Thank you to the entire Keep College Park Beautiful Committee for the invitation to the tea that they held on that same day. And really, you know, that day ended up being like really rainy and cold. It was just a, a bad day. But by the time we got to the tea, it was a beautiful day. Um, the music was good. And I am extremely proud uh, of this committee and the work that they're doing in the city. The event held on the 9th, along with the information that was shared, uh, is a true testament to the committee's dedication to our city and to the citizens. I want to thank um, CPCA for hosting an information session um, this past Saturday for uh, seniors. Uh, I, I wish that we had more seniors at the event. The information um, that was shared by Ms. Pierre Holder, uh, who was the guest speaker at that event, she provided vital information about several resources that are available to our senior citizens through Fulton County. And uh, as soon as I get my hands on that material, I plan on, on making sure that I share it, not only on my city website and social media, but I'm also looking to possibly have some hard copies of the magazine that she has. and the Atlanta Food Bank, uh, Community Food Bank to perform a food giveaway from 2.30 to 5 at the Tracy Wyatt Recreation Center. There will be fresh produce on shelf-stable items, snacks, and I was told to say it's going to be meat, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> meat is a big thing, so there will um, be meat given away at this uh, food given away. Uh, that is on this Friday from 2.30 to 5 p.m. Our Ward 3 Town Hall meeting uh, for Ward 3 residents will be held on the 27th, again at the Tracy Wyatt Recreation Center at 7 p.m. The agenda includes information and updates specifically for uh, Ward 3 residents. Uh, we will be providing food and drinks so I, I am asking um, for everyone who, is, uh, who plans to participate to please register so that we can appropriately plan to have uh, the food and drinks uh, for everyone who plans on participating. The registration link is live on the city website on my page and also on the Ward 3 website. And if you miss going to either one of those, um, you can also uh, get to the link on social media. And those are all of my updates. Thank you. Councilmember Gay. Uh, thank you, uh, colleagues, for your great reports. I'll be brief. Um, the first item I have is we have an award for town hall meeting this Thursday night at 7 o'clock at the Public Safety Building. And um, years past, we've been honored to have actually had great town hall meetings. We've had every elected official that represents College Park from Nan Ulrich to Chairman Pitts to John Lewis, uh, Marvin Harrington, the list goes on and on. Uh, but it appears that with the event being televised, and with at least with Ward 4 being so, you know, somewhat a lot of families moving and new people coming, we don't see that type of activity. So I don't know how many people, you know, watch this. But if you are watching, I'm asking that if particularly Ward 4 would come out and support the town hall meeting, because we only have them like every four months. 
So you can't complain if you don't support. And then those people that don't support Ward 4, you should especially come. Because then that way you can find out more stuff to be mad about. So, <laughs> so, so absolutely, y'all come out and our food is this is it, uh, catering. And a um, couple things that we're going to talk about is the senior tax lien. Now I've been called several times about people have gotten their application for the senior tax lien, but they're ineligible because. They make just a little bit too much money. Some of our educators have an annuity or pension, whatever it was, 501c3. So what I'm going to consider doing is seeing how we can sponsor that legislation back on the 2425 General Assembly. And I'll be talking more with my colleagues about the importance of Putting that back, uh, I know our reputation has been somewhat tainted with some of our legislative officials, but there are some that are neutral, and hopefully we can find a sponsor of that bill, maybe State Senator Tanya Parker. Uh, so the other thing we're going to discuss is to Camp Truett. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues, especially Councilmember Cohen, who has been committed to supporting Camp Truett revitalization, which we require requiring IGA from Fulton County. Everybody know we've been working on this since at least 1998. It's just a shame, but we're not going to worry about the past. We're just going to focus on the present and the future. So they were able to have that as one of the legislative priorities. I was, I was just thinking. How awesome was it to be sitting there with my colleagues talking about Camp Truett as a legislative priority? And that was impossible years past on this same council. So it is absolutely a new day. I'm excited about seeing Camp Truett become a performing asset for the county. Uh, the third thing is uh, there's discussion about the ball field, Bill Evans, being uh, sold, and we having a conversation about having that ball field put at the Jamestown 18 acres, at least on six acres of that. I've been in conversation with Councilman McCoy, whose ward that is, but I'm excited to talk to more stakeholders about it. I was out there today with a developer who had proposed to improve the ball field at Bill Evans before he knew that that may possibly be sold for better and higher use. So we're excited to have that conversation about bringing that at the Jamestown, which by the way is the most central located parcel in the city. If you look at it from an area view, it's actually center of the four wards. It's not encroached in the neighborhood and it has access from the interstate and state highway, so it, it just makes sense. The next thing is I want to talk about is the Jack Longino Scholarship. Those that are listening, if your child, if you live in College Park and your child is 12 credit hours or more, you will be eligible to receive the Jack Longino Scholarship, which is approximately $1,000 per school year. The intent by the late Longino, Jack Longino, was there were kids that were ineligible for the Pell Grant, which is about $2,000 per school year, as well as uh, students in community college, trade schools, and Mayor Longino wanted to make sure that they were able to get some monies for their books, or whatever. So we were able to get that money put into one talent, Joanne over at Club E. She's the administrator of that. So thanks staff for getting that together. And uh, if you know of any college students, have them apply until those funds run out. The next thing is just got a few more. I need to do like you, type my notes. Mm -hmm. I can't even read my own handwriting. Mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> Cameras. So listen, 
you know, I don't like taking victory laps, but I just just contacted the doctor what, last week on a Sunday. What did I say? We we need to talk about staff looking at these cameras because we can look at the cameras. The technology can actually put them on your phone. I was just at the Apple Store in D.C. and they got a thing do like this, and you can see about a hundred cameras. I'm going to talk to Michael Hicks about getting it. But the point is, um, I assume that if you look at the screen time of staff, if someone were to do a study and look at how the screen time of our employees that is not work related, I bet you you got approximately a thousand hours of screen time that we could identify employees, key employees to have those cameras on their phone. We also have the technology that's being introduced, I don't know if the chief has enrolled, uh, unveiled it, that residents' cameras can be now connected to their database. And so residents now, they can see, the police department can see on residence cameras. The next thing is, we have staff that can look at these cameras. I don't know what they're doing, but we have staff that can look at these cameras and keep a report of what cameras. In fact, I thought we had staff that whose job was to just make sure they report on what cameras are operative or inoperative. So you need to have that conversation with your IT director when he comes back. And moreover, when it comes to cameras, I don't agree that all our cameras are down. I mean, you're not just going to come down here and make statements and don't get fact checked. All our cameras are not down. So, Doc, you need to find out exactly what cameras are operative and inoperative. Oh. Um, uh, wanted to have Ms. Bria and Doc, you talk to your airport affairs about and job information for our residents, or at least put their link on our website because this is hiring season at the airport and they got lots of entry level jobs. Citizens can go to the airport, but the citizens on our website should also have access to it as well. The last two I have is that we have a gentleman who was uh, raised on rugby with his grandparents. He's a state lobbyist. He went to UGA. He ran uh, Herschel Walker's campaign, State Agriculture Commission's Tyler's campaign, uh, and several others. He passed at just 52 years old, Matt Littlefield, state lobbyist, so my condolences to, the, to Matt and his family. Uh, you'll probably be hearing more about him because he was quite connected at the Capitol. Matt was also a friend of my wife and I, so we gonna miss Matt. And um, I think, Mayor, that's pretty much all I have. I think I'm checking all my notes. And that's it for Councilman Gay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, don't believe we have executive session this evening. So we are adjourned at 10.07 p.m. We will see you back in April. Thank you.